Next, we're going to set up DHCP in our environment so our guest computers can get an IP address automatically. However, we're not going to set up a DHCP server on the core switch. Now, in an enterprise environment just like this that we're setting up here, that is usually done on a dedicated server. The server will be handing out IPs to users and guests. That typically is not on the core switch. So you can watch that video for knowing how you can do DHCP on a router or a layer three switch. We want to do it from a enterprise perspective. So right now we have, again, we have our server network and we have a server that is connected into our core and that is an active directory server. And here's that server, let's actually locate that. Here it is. And this currently is running or is acting as a DHCP server. And basically here are the details for how that is currently set up. So we have DHCP server uh, it is currently running. And under that, we have created a very simple scope for the guest network. There it is. And then from there, you will see the list of addresses that will be handed out to, you know, to our guest users that are requesting an IP address. So how can we get everything basically working? Because our guest computers will be is part of VLAN 11, which is part of the 172.17.11 network. But our server network is on a completely different network. So in order for our guest computer to talk or to request an IP address from our server, we need to add what is called an IP helper command. So that means that any kind of broadcast for like DHCP, for example, that is received on VLAN 11 on the two core switches, it will forward that to, a, to one or more servers. So in our case, let's go to the um, primary core switch and let's go under VLAN 11, the routed interface, that is important. And we're gonna say IP helper address, followed by the IP of our AD server right here that is acting as a DHCP server. So that IP address is 172.17.201.201.101. Uh, and we can also add another IP for a backup server that will likely exist. For us, we only have one server. So we're done with that. And basically we want to also add this on the other side as well. So go to VLAN 11, do an IP helper, and let's go ahead and put in the IP for that. Great, so once that is completed, okay, that is all that we need to do there. Let's now go to our guest computer that we're also connected to. And let's go ahead and get an IP address by doing an IP config renew. Okay, so it's going to go ahead and uh, try to get an IP and uh, that was quick. There it is. So I got an IP address from that server because of the IP helper command that we added. So dot 100 we see there. So if we go back to our server, uh, I think you go back to here. I think you have to refresh the page. I'm not a server person. Okay, there it is. So we have a new entry there for guest PC and that's when it will expire. And um, you know, other details there for how that scope is set up. I just set up a very simple scope just to kind of illustrate how you would want to set this up. And then from there, our guest computer will access the network normally. So again, this is how you should be setting things up for an enterprise network. You have a dedicated server. And then from there, just add your IP helpers to the appropriate um, interfaces if the server is in a different network. Now, if we have DHCP like server connected to VLAN 11 for some chance, then we do not need to add this command. You only do this if the um, server is in a different network because broadcast cannot, broadcast is not routable. It does not go across different networks. So IP helper basically allows us to forward broadcast networks to different networks.